Are the PDFs formatted? How does the search function operate? I'm here to answer those and other questions you didn't even know you have about the PE. For the day of the exam, you only need to bring with you a calculator and a valid ID. Probably lunch. That's it. You don't need to bring with you your confirmation email or a lock for your locker. The testing center provides keys to their lockers, which you take with you into the exam room. So you don't need to worry about people stealing your key and then taking all your stuff. Once you sit down, you'll be given two pads to write on and three fine tip markers. If you aren't sure if you need space, just start a new pad. It's free. Honey, nothing is free. When writing your work or notes for each question, I would highly recommend you number and then circle each of those question numbers as you take the exam. So when you review or flag a question later on, it's easy to navigate to your notes and to your work you already did. It's definitely worth taking an extra minute or two to be organized with your calcs so you can easily locate them later on in case you remember something or you catch a mistake you made. If you need to skip a question and then go back to it later on, I would recommend you write the number and encircle it and leave a generous amount of space so you can later come back and try that question again. The reason you're leaving that empty space is to help you have enough space later on when you do approach a problem. And more importantly, in case you remember in the middle of a different question, what chapter is relevant or what method you could use to solve that question, you could write that down in the empty space you already provided. Oh, okay, I get it now. When you start your exam, you may feel overwhelmed by the first few problems and that they're way beyond your capacity. And trust me, this is just your nerves. Flag the first few problems that you don't feel confident with and go back to them later once you find your group. Boom, baby! The screen is formatted the same exact way as the FE exam was. And if you don't remember what that was, the references were on the left side and the exam was on the right side of the screen. The left side will have the PE exam reference manual issued by NCES, and on top is a tab that displays the other references for your exam as hyperlinks. When you select this tab and click one of the hyperlink references, it'll open up a pop-up window that goes over your exam and reference view, blocking the standard manual on the exam. Obviously, you can move this window around, make it larger or smaller to help you navigate so you can still see your exam while seeing your reference. And if you want to only see your reference, you could just make it full screen and only see your reference to help you view it better. As you close a window, in other words, as you close a chapter, and you open it up later, that chapter opens up to the same exact location as it was before. Yes, some things never change. You will have access to all the manuals throughout your exam, so use them to your advantage whenever you want and can. For each manual, you can use the search function. The search function is pretty useful because it will display how many results and the results that are within the selected PDF text. You can also slide and enlarge the search portion of the window to see where the word is located and the surrounding text to see if it makes sense for the use you want. For all your references, the chapter names are listed in the reference tab mentioned earlier. And when you open up the PDF, the chapters or subchapters, depending on how it's broken up, are listed as well in the navigation pane on the left-hand side. During the 50 minute break, you are allowed to leave, get lunch or snack or really anything. If you don't come back in time, it eats into your exam time, so keep an eye on the clock. I would recommend you pack yourself a good lunch, obviously, and when coming in the building, look out for common areas or dining areas or somewhere outside maybe, so you can avoid eating lunch in the waiting room of the testing center. You are allowed to turn on your phone, use your notes, or whatever you want during the break. I personally didn't turn on my phone during the break, and I just relaxed the best I could and give my head a break so I could be fresh and prepared for the second half of the day. Relax, 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 relax. If you made this far into the video, I wanted to thank all 17 of you, so thank you, and consider subscribing if you did gain something of value. Now back to the video. The questions of the exam, I believe, are grouped together as the categories listed through the NCES exam specification. For my morning breath portion, which will no longer be relevant as of April 2024, it definitely was grouped together in the order that was listed in the specifications. In the afternoon for my structural portion, it was definitely tougher to tell, but all my load combinations, analysis questions, and design questions were obviously grouped together. My exam was in the following order. It was my analysis, then design questions, connections, code requirements, which I realized as I'm writing the script and reading it, is the order that's given in the specifications. The takeaway is I didn't find myself being given a different type of problem every question and jumping around playing mental gymnastics, so I wouldn't worry about that. Now for all the structural people out there, here's how the PDFs are broken down for you guys. Here we go. All the PDFs are broken into chapters, except for ACI and NDS, which makes the whole PDF searchable. Keep in mind that the specs chapter of the ASC Steel Manual, chapter 16, is considered one chapter, so you can search the entire spec at one time, which is really nice. Nice. To tie this into your studying, I would try to understand what chapter corresponds to what information, which will help you narrow down your search when you're searching for something during the exam. For me, the OSHA questions felt like control F type questions. The OSHA manual is kind of difficult to navigate because it's formatted in two columns. When you use your control F, it searches the PDF across per line and reads the text from one column into the adjacent column. Therefore, you may need to adjust your search term or go through a more broad search. I would definitely make use of the adjustable search results window as described earlier for this type of question. Best of luck. I hope these tips help. You got this.